This is the India story. I'm Vikram Chandra. Now, one of the most crucial days to keep track of the India story is Budget Day, because that's when we get a sense of the world's fifth largest economy and how it is doing. Today, Nirmala Sitaraman came out with a budget that seemed to be a bet on growth. The twin highlights: big bank spending on infrastructure, which would kickstart investment, and some tax reforms which would presumably encourage consumption by the middle class. Now, why is all of that important? It's important because consumption plus investment means growth. And if India remains the fastest growing economy in the world, all of that spending will end up paying for itself because as an economy grows, taxes go up. If taxes go up, it pays for the spending. It's a nice virtuous cycle if it works. And that's pretty much what the finance minister has bet on today in her budget. Now we're going to look at all of those in some details, but first let me just take you through some of the key highlights of the budget. 10 lakh crore rupees in spending for infrastructure. Defence spending is up too, but not as much as many had actually expected. But infrastructure spending has gone up. New tax slabs, especially in the new tax regime. In fact, the whole focus this time seemed to be to encourage people to new, move to the new regime. The new regime is actually going to be the default. You have to decide to stay in the old regime if you really want to. Tax exemptions are up sharply to 7 lakh rupees in the new uh, uh, regime. The maximum rate has also come down from 42.5% for the super rich to around 39%. So it's not just the middle classes who've got some relief. The super rich have got relief too. Those, that's for income above 5 crore rupees. But there are riders to all of this, as they always are. Insurance premiums above a certain limit of 5 lakhs will not get exemptions. Insurance company stocks fell apart partly as a result of some of that. And there were other changes as well. Market-linked debentures will now pay full tax. It will be charged as per your, your, uh, your uh, short-term tax rate, which is something which is uh, closing a loophole that has existed for a while. Senior citizens, though, get to invest more in senior saving schemes, and that is good news for them. Seven priority areas have got a spending boost, including the new economy. So that was, those are some of the major highlights that Nirmala Sitaraman had in the budget, and a lot more besides. Well, for a lot more on all of this, we're now being joined by one of the most respected industrialists in the country, Mr. T. N. Narendran, is the managing director of Stata Steel, one of the largest steel companies in India. He's also headed CII. Mr. Narendran, thank you for joining us on the India story. How do you think this budget addresses what CII has been asking for, what you and industry have been asking for? What are the big ticket announcements today that you think are really going to have an impact on the Indian economy? I think Vikram, in many ways, it addresses a lot of us of the industry and of CII. I think uh, for the last few years, we've been saying that uh, please keep focused on infrastructure. I think every year the allocation has increased, which is positive. And I think we're seeing uh, money being spent on the ground in some sense of the term, because the focus on infrastructure has a huge multiplier effect. Uh, it helps uh, cement, it helps steel, it helps automobiles, it helps construction equipment, it creates jobs uh, because it's infrastructure is built across a country. Second big advantage of the focus on infrastructure is it reduces the logistics cost because in India that's higher than it is in the rest of the world. And when we look at competitiveness of industry, while we can drive competitiveness within the factory gates, we are dependent on some of these costs outside the factory gate. So that's a very big positive thing. There have been initiatives to address the ease of doing business, uh, simplification of taxes. I also see some of the initiatives in the budget this year on trying to get consumption back on track because uh, I think rural consumption particularly has been a bit fragile post COVID. I think the uh, focus on increasing expenditure on health also addresses this subject indirectly because one of the reasons why there's fragility in rural consumption is because people have spent more than they planned on medical expenses. So overall, I think it's a good budget. Uh, there's also focus on the long-term transition to green. So the big bet is clearly on infrastructure, which uh, should have made the markets happy, but they seem a little bit royal today, not just insurance, but also, I guess, the Adani saga and the saga and some of the Adani stocks is still affecting the markets a bit. Well, uh, you know, uh, obviously, uh, that's a factor which affects the equity markets. Uh, but, you know, if you really look at the infrastructure which is being built, uh, I think there are multiple industries, multiple companies involved. So. Uh, you know, India traditionally has been more consumption-led growth, you know, unlike many developing countries, including China, which has always been, at least for the last two decades, 
investment-led growth. In fact, China is trying to make this transition to a consumption-led growth kind of uh, uh, economy. So I think it was time for India to make that shift. And I think we are seeing the impact of that uh, you know, across sectors. And uh, like you said, steel benefits, but uh, many other sectors will also benefit. All right, Mr. Narendra. Now, it's not a one-off effort, of course, a budget. And I know CI has been talking and you have been talking a lot about the unfinished agenda. So if private industry is to step up and start investing, as I think the government expects you to, what more is it that you think needs to be done? I know, for example, you've been speaking about ease of doing business, ending harassment, steps like that. Is that what you think still needs to be done? Absolutely. So some steps have been taken and uh, it's obviously work in progress. I think uh, making it easy to comply uh, certainly uh, found feature in this budget. Decriminalizing a lot of the laws uh, was also referred to. I think these are good actions. But uh, also, I think as a country, if we really want to be an attractive investment destination, uh, you know, we need to really be aligned at the center, at the state, at the district, because oftentimes industries struggle uh, with local issues, you know, and hence, uh, you know, I think the fact that you really need to work hard to attract investments uh, from the private sector is something which everyone needs to recognize. You know, even as a country, we are still continuing to compete with other countries who are also potential investment destinations. Similarly, at the state level, I know that many states are competing very aggressively with each other, but, uh, you know, there's so much more we can do. And I think uh, while the Indian investors, Indian entrepreneurs will be more indulgent when you are trying to attract foreign capital, they probably will be less indulgent. So we just need to be a bit more careful on that. All right, so as, as we've been saying all along, the key focus perhaps today, that big allocation for infrastructure. And for more on that, we're now being joined by Nena Lal Kidwai, a prominent commentator. She's been one of the leading industrial bankers, everything. Nena, the banking sector, insurance sector, looking a little bit nervous, I think, today, maybe because of some of those changes in insurance, uh, or maybe it's the Adani Group. Uh, I don't know which one it is. What's your sense of the markets uh, overall and the, and the budget overall? You know, uh, Vikram, just uh, the budget itself has been, I think, uh, uh, a great uh, step forward. Uh, I think many of us were nervous given that this was uh, really the last big budget uh, and therefore it could have been very much an election budget. But uh, looking at the numbers and talking to some of my economist friends, I think uh, there is a lot of credibility in the way the numbers have been put together. Uh, the fact that the fiscal glide path has indeed been adhered to uh, at 5.9, I think there was some hope that it would be 5.8, but 5.9 is quite acceptable. And uh, commitment to get down to the 4.5, uh, as uh, you well know, by 2026. Uh, uh, and doing all this while the growth and infrastructure and capex uh, is not just maintained, but actually going up is uh, a really uh, a very very uh, good step okay so tell so me how it's what, happened Nana, that that we, tell me how it happened because i hear a lot of people asking that question so in direct taxation percent taxation thirty five thousand, you know given uh, foregone if you like um and there's a big up uh, rise in spending and infrastructure and the fiscal deficit is going down so there's no there's no magic in this how is it actually being done so I think uh, one, Vikram, is uh, there's a degree of optimism on tax collections. And uh, we've had a very strong year in terms of uh, the collections, both the GST and direct uh, over this last year. And there's a hope that that continues. Now, uh, of course, to the extent that uh, global recessionary fears, et cetera, impact performance in the country, uh, they could go down. But the view right now is Indian industry is on a roll and very much driven by domestic demand and not likely to be hugely impacted by global headwinds. Uh, I guess the big global headwind that could hurt us is uh, oil prices. Uh, but that as of now looks like uh, it's uh, well under control okay. and one which uh, we can manage. So if you look at uh, the optimism on uh, revenue collection on the one hand, uh, there is a second number which has crept in, which is uh, the disinvestment number, and that does look a bit rich. Uh, it's at uh, another 500 billion again this year, and we barely achieved 300 uh, uh, for the current year. So whether that could be achieved that to an election year is a bit of a question. Okay. Uh, 
However, there is always the ability for government to scale back. And I haven't had a look at the food and fertilizer numbers, but uh, as we go forward, it's, it's quite likely that fertilizer prices come down. Uh, the subsidies that happened in fertilizer and food, uh, which were very large, uh, may give some leeway to ensure that we reach the fiscal deficit number as committed, despite yeah. the high capex spent. So part of what you were saying was election year, a lot of people were expecting, you know, maybe some populist measures, what are sometimes called populist measures. This, for example, is what uh, an opposition uh, uh, leader, uh, Shashi Tharoor, told us just earlier in the day, saying a lot, he's really quite upset about the spending in areas like Eman Rega. Yeah. And if you look at Enrega, uh, the good news there is, again, that the states where the interest-free loans and funding has gone up, uh, hence the 4.5% of GDP in terms of capex, there's actually guidance to the states to support government programs, uh, to issue municipal bonds, which would suggest get your municipalities right, get the urbanization and urban infrastructure right. Uh, so in that, and use Enriga to get some of this uh, work done. So I think Enriga en uh, will come up in many ways, not just through the direct disbursement from the center, but also in the way the states use the budgets uh, and the funds that are provided okay. to them. Right. La last question uh, uh, to, to uh, Nena. I know that today the budget's almost been overtaken in many people's eyes by some of what is happening around you know, one of the largest groups in the company, the Adani Group, and, and issues around that. Are you picking up a lot of concern globally as to how this could affect the India story itself? Uh, Vikram, not really, uh, because I've been very focused on the budget. But uh, the good news is uh, Adani's uh, FPO did close, uh, and that I think was a big step. Uh, essentially, uh, I think uh, you know the scrutiny that uh, they will continue to be under, not just from the uh, in the report, but also uh, from regulators here, will continue. And uh, I think to that extent, it will uh, impact uh, their prices, their share prices, and uh, the way the market looks at them. Okay. But, you know, this is really all part of uh, being in the limelight, being uh, on a high growth trajectory. And uh, I hope uh, for their sake and for India's sake that uh, they come out uh, okay at the end of this. Right. Uh, there's every indication right now that uh, they have tackled some of these issues uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, we can only hope that uh, it doesn't bring the markets down uh, further. All right. Nera Lal Kidai, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And who better to take that conversation forward with than uh, Madhusudan Kela is again one of the most respected voices in the Indian stock markets, has got his finger completely on the pulse. Uh, Mr. Kela, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, first of all, let me start off by asking you, what do you make of the budget? Uh, how do you think the stock markets have reacted to it from a short-term, medium-term, long-term point of view? Uh, thank you so much for having me, and it's very nice to speak to you after a long time. Uh, Vikram, I think the uh, budget was absolutely fabulous, I would say. The finance minister did deliver on all counts, you know, whatever would have been expected of this budget, uh, what she should not do and what she should do. I think she delivered actually on all counts. So uh, let me touch, obviously, the obvious thing what she should not have done is touch the capital gains tax, which, which uh, the market was very skeptical about, right? So there was no change out there. Uh, they actually delivered on the fiscal path. Not only did they, de did they deliver last year number, they guided for a lower number and also they guided for a path of 4.5% fiscal deficit after uh, two years. So uh, then, you know, the capital expenditure that the government has announced uh, overall uh, of 10 lakh crore rupees, that was also kind of a positive surprise, if I may say, for, from the market perspective. So that was also fully delivered. So Third, she rationalized the taxes, gave a little bit more money in people's hand, which which possibly will make the inflationary pressure less for the for the middle class people, and also they will have some uh, uh, some money in their hand to to spend. So, so I think on all counts, it was a very good budget. I would say. 
Okay, so let me just look at some of those from a stock market point of view. And obviously, some of the insurance company stocks fell. That may be because some of those, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the premiums that could be paid are now being capped at a certain amount. So maybe the insurance companies were unhappy with that reason. Infrastructure stocks, you would expect to react really positively because, and capital goods stocks also uh, because it's uh, heading in a certain direction. Yeah, of course, I would say, Vikram, if we if, um, treat this as a passing phase for the market, what is happening which is beyond budget, uh, you know, and I'm sure in, 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 in due course of time, this will all get sorted out. And I'm opposed to that, or the bottom of the story, specifically in the infrastructure sector, I would, I would think uh, in the capital goods sector, will really start to look good. Because, you know, I don't remember ever in the history Indian budget ever provided for 10 lakh crore rupees of capital expenditure in one year, ever in the history. Yeah. In the stock markets itself, though the entire infrastructure story may be overtaken a little bit today, at least by what's happening with uh, the Adani company stocks, Adani Enterprise itself after its FPO was successful yesterday, down by what is it, nearly 22, 23 uh, percent or more. Um, what is your sense of what is happening there? So, see, I don't want to comment on the stock prices, uh, Vikram, to be honest with you, yeah. but I would go to the extent of saying uh, Gautam Bhai has been very well known to me personally, and he has shown exceptional capability in the past to tackle some of these issues, and also they have shown excellent execution uh, in the past, right? They have managed to do so many acquisitions. They've been able to manage to consolidate. So, and then I was saying, for India's sake and for his sake, I would, uh, uh, I would wish that uh, they overcome this short-term turbulence. And, uh, you know, because India definitely needs entrepreneurs like him uh, to, to take the industry story forward. All right. So, you're, you're saying that it could be just short-term uh, uh, turmoil uh, out there. Turning to one other sector, I mean, of course, Adani stocks have been rising very sharply. The other sector which has been doing really well is defense and, you know, many defense stocks. Today, they were again under a certain amount of pressure today. Is that because maybe they were expecting a more uh, larger amount of spending on, on, on defense? Yeah, also, it's a combination of factor, uh, Vikram. You know, defense stocks had done so well. So there were a lot of expectations which were being built up. And typically, pre-budget, you know, all the defense companies, railways companies, they typically, you know, see that everyone knows that there'll be good positive announcement. And we did not see anything in the defense today. So maybe a bit of uh, reaction to that. All right, fine. So any sectors you'd be particularly looking at, uh, Madhu Kela and... Um... Overall, are you hopeful that this is going to be a good year for the Indian stock markets? I would say, overall, if you have a three-year view, then you should, this is good, interesting time to invest in equities. You need to buy selective shares. I am more biased to buy shares in the financial sector, in the infrastructure sector. I am more biased to, to ensure that I build a good portfolio which is linked to Indian economy and which is in linked to India growth story. And I have really no reason to doubt on India growth story uh, because of whatever is going on. I think this is this is a passage of time and it, it should settle down. All right, Madhu Kela, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank uh, you so uh, Vikram, much. I just, want to, I just want to say, you know, one thing that uh, you must run proper disclaimer that we obviously make a lot of forward-looking statements and people must consult their own investment advisor before acting on our advice. Madhu Kela, thank you so much for joining us, though. It's always a thank pleasure you, speaking to you and getting your sense thank of what's happening. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I have to tell you, one of the highlights of the programming today was we got the chance to have CII Chief Chandrajit Banerjee with us at the same time as we had the Sherpa of, uh, for G20, Amitabh Kant. And we asked them, and they asked each other, what was the big picture message from this budget to take to the rest of the world? So what better way to end this program with than to play that particular segment out for you. My question, or uh, rather a comment uh, to Mr. Kant would be, he is the Sherpa, the G20 Sherpa and uh, today, and that's a huge opportunity for India this year. So what he would he see as a, a couple of key messages that he will carry to the global community on, uh, on India's, uh, from this budget, about uh, the attractiveness of India as a destination 
to get more investments and act, uh, attractiveness of India, uh, uh, more capital. And what is India giving to the world? to the G20 uh, 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 from, from this budget, what really comes out from, uh, I mean, he must have got some three or four important talking points for him for this year. So, uh, Chandraji, that's a very important uh, uh, comment that you've made, and let me spell out a few. Firstly, uh, it highlights the transformational uh, focus, the political will to take India to a new era of growth demonstrates the political will of the government to build a new India. It uh, demonstrates the huge commitment to accelerate the pace of growth through cap uh, uh, CapEx expenditure and uh, enhancing it very, very substantially. It also uh, demonstrates that uh, India wants to build really top class quality infrastructure through airports, through railways, I mean, look at railways, 2.4 lakh crores, uh, you know, uh, outlay for uh, railway. Uh, that's uh, uh, almost a 500% jump over what it had in 2013-14. And uh, roads, uh, highways, etc. It also uh, focuses very strongly on travel and tourism. You know, 50 tourism destinations to be selected through a challenge route. And secondly, that uh, it wants to build an India which will be a decarbonized India. It wants to build an India which will be totally digital. So you are technologically pole vaulting through this budget. That is a big thing. And also it says that you are talking about one crore farmers to adopt natural farming uh, and putting in at a thousand uh, bio input resource centers. So uh, all in all, it's a budget for a green future. It's a budget for a huge amount of technological leapfrogging. And that's what makes it an extraordinary budget. And that's it for the India story this week. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Vikram Chandra. Do remember to tune in next week once again. For now, good night.